Well, welcome back to New Life Family Center and uh, the signs of the time, the mask, right? Um, we're going to be talking about this a little bit to today and using some scripture to talk about, no, not whether a mask is right or wrong, whether you should or shouldn't wear one. That is not where I'm at today. But have you noticed how this, this mask, this little piece of cloth, paper, cloth, whatever it really truly is, how controversial it has become. And it's interesting, I was reading an article the other day how they were saying that there are no te known tests amongst the protesters or rioters of COVID. But they also are saying they're not testing <laughs> those people to see when they weren't wearing. And then you hear a lot of people saying, oh, well, they're all wearing masks now. And a lot of them are, you, you can see that. Um, but I also know a lot of the footage that's uh, pro-demonstration shows everybody in masks, and then the ones who are anti-demonstration, <laughs> very few masks are being worn. You know what? We can turn things sideways. Uh, we can twist facts. We can t twist research to, to make things come out, kind of say things that we want. Numbers say the things that we want. Um, but the mask itself has become really controversial. You know, when we first started with the masks, the ages have ranged who should wear them, who shouldn't wear them, um, what works, what doesn't work. I mean, the, if you go back when, when this whole thing started and they were suggesting masks, the only thing that would work, they told you, was a certain type of mask. And I remember they had a number and, you know, medical grade and, and those kind of things. That if you wore a piece of cloth over your face, it would do no good. Don't, don't do that. Don't think it's helping. Well, now that, that they're saying that's wear that, that's just as good as a medical grade mask. It's it's crazy the information that we're getting. But I've seen videos. You probably have too. Whether you go to YouTube or you go to Facebook, Facebook is where I see a lot of mine because you see one and it leads you to all these other ones. But you see people yelling uh, at people like in a store or uh, a, a restaurant to go. I saw one in a. You know, I think it was a Little Caesars type pizza place. That, well, some lady was coming to pick up her pizza. She refused to wear a mask, and um, um, pe people were you know, were asking her to wait outside, and she was just screaming and yelling. She had a right not to wear a mask. And I've seen the flip side where people were in Costco's and and other other stores and yelling at people that weren't wearing a mask. And this was back at least here in Oregon when it was there was a time when you you didn't have to wear a mask if you had a uh, medical condition that hindered you or gave you issues w when you wore it. And you were told we were told by the governor not to ask. Um, and then, of course, there was more details of you couldn't ask what the medical condition was because of the HIPAA laws. And, you know, just this thing went, it just unraveled all over the place. All of these details and the next things. Well, now it's, it's a full mandate even outside. You're wearing a mask if you're in a group, um, you know, that kind of stuff. And, and I, and I, there are people out there that, uh, or will wear a mask, um, in one setting and not in another. And they're okay with that. And so the whole mask thing, is 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 my my illustration um, for what I'm talking about today. Today we're going to look at a couple quotes from Jesus Himself. Um, but you know, when we opened up church here in Sherwood, you know, I put out emails and I said, if you're comfortable with a mask, wear a mask. If you're not, don't wear a mask. If you're not coming to comfortable coming to church at all, that's okay too. We're, you're still part of the church family, and. Uh, we want people to to you know walk in, in in the way that with this health crisis that they're most comfortable. And there are some people. Some of you are watching this morning, or sometime throughout the week, you're watching this video. And we haven't seen you physically back at church yet. We miss you. We look forward to the time when this thing clears up. And I'm not sure what that's going to take till we all feel comfortable, right? Uh, is it going to take a cure? Is it going to take a vaccine? Is it going to take uh, so many cases? Not be, I, I don't know what it's going to take um, because there's, there's people on both sides. I even have people saying, I've heard them say that, you know, once the election is over, uh, COVID will be over. Now, I don't believe that. But I think uh, the political side of things has a big part. And I don't care what side of the aisle you stand on on this one, you know. 
it's come down to either re-electing a president or not electing a president for a lot of facts that come pouring out and the blame and the pointing because they're all trying to uh, make their point and use that against or for or whatever. But if we talk about this, it's been very interesting to me how we have just, as a, as a nation, have fallen apart, uh, the videos that I'm talking about, over a piece of cloth. Um, and it's funny that, you know, at church especially, I don't wear one because I'm usually singing, I'm usually preaching, I'm doing some things like that. Um, but, you know, go into a store where they're required, and, and I'll be honest, I don't like them, um, and so I don't go into a lot of stores a lot. I've done it. Um, you know, Saturday, Terry and I ran out of stores. Wear it into a restaurant. If we're going to go inside, tell you to your table, you take it off. You know, there there's some things that, that we do do. Um, everybody's doing this at the level of their own understanding and comfort. But there's a lot of anger being pointed. And so I want to come back to two verses in Matthew today. And if you're, the, if you're opening your Bible this morning with us, or you're in the first book of the New Testament, and uh, we're going to talk about it. And these aren't just things that, that I, I will read to you today and have to interpret. You know, this is what it means because this is what was going on. It, you don't have to be a historian. You don't have to be a scholar to understand what Jesus is saying. Uh, if you have a Bible that is what they call a red letter version today. Uh, that means this is Jesus actually saying that. And mine is a, is a red letter version. I just, not because of any reason. And sometimes people think, well, I don't need to want a red letter version because that means I don't know as much. No, it doesn't. It just means you can quickly identify, oh, this is Jesus talking. And that's why I like it. But uh, mine, and, and this is again, New American Standard Version, whatever yours may be this morning. We're looking at Matthew seven twelve. I'm sure Adam will throw this up for us. He always does. We really appreciate that. By the way, Adam's back because you're seeing this on a good video. Um, so in Matthew 7, 12, it says, Therefore, however you want people to treat you, so treat them. For this is the law and the prophets. Do unto others. We haven't heard it that way if you're my age and older. Do unto others as you would have them do unto you. See, when it comes down to this mass thing, the yelling and the screaming for whatever reason, for not wearing a mask, for wearing a mask, you know, back and forth. Um, this whole thing, we're not treating each other in love. We're not treating each other how we want to be treated. Um, the comments and the things that we say, and I'm not saying, please, I'm not saying whether you wear a mask or don't wear a mask. I'm not talking about that. I'm talking about how you feel. You know, Adam and I were talking before we shot this video today, and, and we talk about things, and that's what I like about he and I. We'll get together, and whether we staff meeting, and we just sometimes ponder things and talk about what's going on and look to the Bible for, for answers. And uh, he's been a great partner in ministry for that reason. Um, but it was interesting as we talked today that how political this has become and how divisive all of a sudden it's becoming Churches themselves, instead of being in unity uh, to be able to get to, together and worship or not, uh, you know, um, doing it together, standing together. Uh, that's what I like about putting out the videos. If you're not here on Sunday morning, live and in person, uh, we're glad you're with us either on a Sunday morning uh, at 10 o'clock or you're watching at some point throughout the week. We're just glad you're with us. But it helps bring unity because I'm preaching the same topic in the same sermons, I, 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 verses, excuse me. I got to admit, sometimes they get more stories or they get a little more here, a little more there on Sunday morning because I have the time. But at the same time, I just, this helps keeps us together. And if we're looking at this, and I'm talking to not just people in our church, but obviously if you're, you're watching it today, I got a lot of comments from the last couple of weeks from people who aren't physically part of our church, you know, before COVID hit. And, uh, we're inviting people to come view and stuff, and friends of mine from the past, or or former football players of mine, or Terry, friends of Terry. We're just seeing a lot of stuff and getting a lot of a lot of feedback, and it's been good. And thank you for doing that. Keep keep feeding back, and we'll we'll we love to hear from you and that kind of stuff. Um, but it's important that we understand that this is about loving Jesus Christ and loving people. Therefore, however you want people to treat you, so treat them. And I love where it says, this is the law. 
See, this is what they call the golden rule. You probably grew up with that. You probably may or may not remember this verse being referred to as the golden rule. But these are one of those things that even if you weren't going to Sunday school, you weren't going to church, you know, people would say it in different, different ways, but you want to treat people how you want to be treated. And it's funny, my mom always, when I was growing up, had the, had the saying, you know, I, uh, something about not knowing a man until, oh, something about him not having shoes until I saw he had no feet. And understanding walking a mile in someone else's shoe, walking a foot today in someone else's shoes, um, we don't understand uh, why people are the way they are or whatever. I can remember early on when I was uh, checking in trucks for it was U.S. Foods, uh, excuse me, um, Food Service of America at the time. We're now U.S. Foods. One of the f- first uh, months that I was there, a gentleman came in and he was on the phone. He was obviously in an argument, and from what he was saying, it, it sounded like to me it was probably with his wife, girlfriend, or something. And when he got off that phone call, and he was a long way from home, you know, a couple thousand miles at least from home. And he is not in a good mood. He doesn't like me. He doesn't want to deal with me. He's snapping at me. He's yelling, you know, kind of, you know, not yelling like screaming, but he's very harsh with me. And and I'm and I'm thinking, you know, part of you, trust me, I am no saint. I'm sure part of me, I don't remember that exact exchange, uh, but I'm sure part of me was going, man, what a jerk. I don't need to be treated like that. I don't know what's going on in your life, but you know, it's not my fault. But I remember later after he had gone through, you know, I think it was the Holy Spirit saying, you don't know what he's going through. And we hear today they're talking more and more about suicide. They're talking more and more about depression uh, from having to stay home. Uh, they're talking now with schools saying they're not going to open for the first part of the school year. There's, you know, people are worried about uh, uh, students' um, depression and those kind of things. And these are all things, you know, they're, they're trying to way is the physical uh, well-being and the mental well-being, and how do we balance those by keeping them at home for so we don't have a physical interaction that could cause COVID problems? But now we're into the mental side where people get depressed and discouraged, and we don't realize as a human race how much we are dependent on one another. So Jesus is telling that. That's a that's a passage that he is talking to us about. Then we go to Matthew, uh, same, same book, uh, chapter 29, verses 39. But I want to start actually um, at 37, because this is talking about the commandments. And here it says, You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul and with all of your mind. This is the great and first or foremost commandment. This is the greatest one. But what I want to focus on is the second one, following up here in verse 39. The second one is like it, Jesus says. You shall love your neighbor as yourself. Here again, in these two verses, in in Jesus' own words, him speaking, he's talking about how we treat others, how we care about people. And the one thing that's happening during the COVID junk is that we're falling apart as a nation. And I think it, it shows our lack of foundation as, as a Christian nation that we used to be and, and things like that. And, you know, no matter where you stand with the mask thing and the riot thing and Republican, Democrat, conservative, you know, liberal, no matter where you stand with how you're going to vote. And people are talking about how they're going to vote. I've never heard so much talking about how they're going to vote. I mean, this, this nation is, is just kind of crumbling in a sense. But we've lost the willingness. We've lost the capacity maybe to love. And I've said it before, I think, on these videos uh, that the only way to truly love, it, like Jesus is talking about here, is through the love of Jesus Christ. You know, we can decide we're turning against somebody because they've treated me wrong and this and that. Oh, my goodness, not that you don't have a right to do that or feel that way, you know, but the love of Christ tells us to forgive, tells us to turn the other cheek, to tell, you know, those kind of, look at, the, look at your neighbor, love him as you would love yourself, meaning that we probably really like or love ourselves, not that we're narcissistic or we, you know, look in the mirror and go, oh, wow, this is wonderful, right? 
But we probably really care for ourselves. We wouldn't put ourselves in harm's way. Even if you're the adventurous type, you you probably wouldn't go skydiving if you really believed that chute wasn't going to open. We've got to care for one another. So as Christians, you know, and and you've seen this in the last few weeks, we go back and forth. We talk about ourselves. We talk about, um, you know, keeping a relationship with God right. And then we come back and we talk about reach, outreach and that kind of stuff. And this is more than just sharing the gospel and inviting to church or to a video series or, or whatever. But this is about the actual act of caring. You know, you've got neighbors around you. And yeah, maybe you can't go to their door and go inside. You've got to maybe talk over a fence. Um, how, you know, however that works a length of of distance in your yard, Um, those kind of things. You know people at your favorite drive-up coffee shop uh, where you can uh, talk to to the person, the barista, or the the people giving you your coffee that morning or your drinks of whatever kind. You know, kind words. Smiles. Smiles go a long way. Um, You know, if there's been one comment made towards me it's when I'm smiling in my job at, at trekking and trucks, and I've had guys who've been doing it for years say, "Don't, don't you, don't change, don't change." It, it's important that we care. We talked a little bit Sunday. We told a story about Connor and having the favor of God, and how at work uh, his manager pulled him into his office and wanted to know what Connor was doing because the attitude and the 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 atmosphere of, of work was really bad. And Connor comes to work and all he said, let's do this. And he's up and kind of excited and he's really excited to work, you know, and he's excited he's going to school and he's gonna learn mechanics. And you know, right now his life, he's excited about it. And the manager says, what are you doing? And literally somebody in church Sunday blurted out, that's the favor of God. We have the favor of God as believers in Jesus Christ. But more importantly, we have the responsibility while he's in us, while he's loving us, to be kind to others, to to put them first, so to speak. And that's important. And so I want to remind us to not let this piece of cloth come between us. Um, you know, and I'm, and I'm not talking about you and me in the church or that. I'm, and it might be for somebody out there, you know, close family or friends or, or whatever it may be. But don't let it, don't think a certain way about people in a store. Don't let your heart get hardened in those areas. Love people and understand where they're trying to come from. Let's pray today. Father, we thank you again that uh, we can gather on this video. We can gather in person as long as we still can. And Father, we just thank you that it's that you're in the midst of all of this and you've given us the technology and you've given us the ability. You've given us people like Adam who knows how to record and do sound and and, and edit and put this on, on the video and so others can see it. Because Lord, if it was up to me, it wouldn't happen because I don't know. But Father, you gave him to this church just like you've given each one of us to someone else in life. Let us be an example. Let us love, let us treat others how we would want to be treated. Treat them like they're us. Father, we thank you in Jesus' name, amen. Hey, have a great week in Jesus and even uh, all the things you do. Make him first and we'll see you next Sunday. Have a great week.